Good morning, Aaron. How are you doing today? Good morning, sir. I'm well. How are you? Fantastic. Dude, I got to tell you something. One of the things that really caught my attention when I first started listening to the podcast was right there in the beginning, and I want to know how many listeners actually pick up on this. You say to listen with your headphones, and I'm going, why Why would he say that? And then when you get into it, oh my God, you really do play with the left-right sides. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a little 3D audio logo on the artwork, and, and it's really not for show. I mean, we we really build this stuff. Um, you know, some some people use these little microphones that look like ears to actually like you can you can talk to one side and and the sound you know shifts over to one side of the spectrum talk to the other side it moves to the other side it's very very neat what 3d audio can do these days it captivates your imagination is what it does because it makes it feel like that you're right there without uh, slipping into a pair of vr glasses yeah there's nothing better than listening to a spooky podcast and hearing like the crunch of leaves behind you <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly and especially when the way that the characters are moving around in it when they come into the room you can hear the footsteps in the background so you can go okay this this scene is starting to build here yeah absolutely i think it's one of the advantages that the the audio space has over video in the sense that you're out in the forest in vancouver filming an episode of the x-files and you, you get the crunch of leaves and stuff but and i'm not an audio expert but it, it's happening in the natural world, but in podcast space, we want to create somebody walking in the woods. We create that with sounds in a library, but we can build them into left to right channels. We can have them move from the left to the right. It's yeah. just, it's really amazing. Yeah. I, I had a program director tell me one time, because I, I was imaging at 1079 here in Charlotte, and he comes in, he goes, what are you doing? Why are you playing with the left and right channels like that? Listeners don't care. And that, that changed me forever. <laughs> but yet when I heard your podcast, I went, I do care, and I am a listener. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, if you're a rock fan or a music fan in general, you've been hearing bands do this for a yes. long, long time where, you know, the Foo Fighters song kicks on and it starts on your left ear and it, and it you know, kind of shifts over to the right and then it's all all over your head. And I, it's it's effective. But I think when you get into audio fiction, that's when it really starts to flex. Like you really feel the power of playing with the three-dimensional space, the spatial audio, as people talk about now. Let's talk about the creative process of this. This is this is a story that you created, but the actual podcast was brought together by a different person. How did you how did you relinquish, you know, that that kind of control to somebody else to put the podcast together? Well, you know, it helps to be incredibly busy uh, <laughs> <laughs> to be able to hand that off to somebody else. No, but, um, you know, it's, it's a book that I wrote and self-published like a decade ago. And um, my fans love it. It's a great story, but we you know we didn't want to come out and make a podcast that was essentially an audio version, you know, a scripted sound effects version of the book. And so I turned to my buddy Carlos. I've known him for years. He's a, an amazing writer. We worked on, you know, the Dan Brown TV show a couple of years ago, The Lost Symbol, The Exorcist, and um, on my TV show, Lore. And, uh, and I said, hey, here's a story. It's a seed. Um, you know, you've got a general plot, point A to point B, but can you bring it to life in a new way can you add in new characters can, you know and and he just he just took it did his magic and produced the scripts for it and they're they're stunning i laughed i i i held my breath because i didn't know sometimes <laughs> where things were going it was great yeah <laughs> you know and it's so relatable and i don't know if it's because i'm a podcaster as well but when sarah's in that car and she's talking to her sister and she's going hey catch up with the times it's a team of one i burst out laughing at that because oh, not yeah. everybody's got a team dude Oh yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. I um, I I tend to like to cast these supernatural shows with people who really have deep roots in other shows of that same genre. So yeah. in this one, uh, Ruth Connell, who plays uh, Sheriff Max Allen, she's a, a veteran of the supernatural TV show, capital S. Um, but but Rachel Rosenblum has this really great comedy route, and I I, I just love how it works and how she plays off Arturo Castro in this show. Like, there's just there's some perfect comedy timing in this. She's mean. She, when she was doing that interrogation, yeah. she's mean, dude. <laughs> well, you know, she's she got kind of she's kind, but also bitter and, and sarcastic. And you know that that's how we are out here. See, and, that, and and the way I look at it, when I when I heard her character first coming into the storyline, I'm going, okay, here comes the conflict because you've got to have conflict when you're when you're sharing a story. Oh yeah, oh yeah. She's but she brings in. She brings in a world of like, I guess, in some sense, unnecessary conflict. You know, she's, she's got a weird relationship with her sister. She's got this weird relationship with work and life. And all of those things kind of feed into who she is as she enters into town. So 
um, yeah, we get we get quite a bit of conflict. Oh yeah, and when and when Sarah first comes to town, first of all, you know, for the, for that guy to you know the, the, to work on her car, the the the, um, the the guy that's driving the truck, I mean, he lets her lets her stay at the house, and I'm going, what would I do that? But then again, that's a small town vibe, isn't it? And that was your way of oh, yeah. uh, you see bringing that small town forward. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. The Bruder family they also provide you know I mean Jack's very nice and helpful and. Sam Rod, who who voices the character, has the most amazing gravelly voice for that character. But, you know, the whole family sort of gives us a little microcosm of, of what's going on in the town itself. This yeah. conflict, this back and forth of, yeah, yeah, it's great. Oh, yeah. And it makes you kind of, when you start hearing the whispers, you're going, ooh, are there monsters around me if I hear these whispers in my head? Right. Right. Yeah. In the script for, for months, it just said the sound, all capital letters. Mm, <laughs> and mm. So we had to bring that idea to life and uh, it's going to it's going to morph and evolve as the season goes on, too. What is the language? Is it Spanish that 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 the you know, right there at the beginning of the story where, where the guy that worked at the restaurant, is he speaking Spanish? Because I really wanted to you know get into what he was saying. And his, oh, yeah. his mother, um, his mother. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's a bit of Spanish in this. And OK. It's, um, it, and and it, there's a there's a reason for it. I'm not a big spoiler guy, but okay, there's you know okay. there there's some reasons for it. And, you know we'll see elements of that. And Carlos also has um, some visions for a second season that moves us in a different direction that could be fantastic. So it's it, it's it's a springboard for things to come. I'll tell you, before I even got to the end credits on the first episode, I was sitting there going, my God, this music is unbelievable. And then to hear that it's available on Apple, I mean, you guys are making this available. Oh yeah, absolutely. the The music for it is on Spotify. It's on Apple. I, and and the the great thing about this is that Carlos Folia, who wrote this show, along with his assistant uh, Alessandra Jara del Castillo, um, Carlos wrote the music, and he had this big grand vision for it. It's sort of like tracks that build upon each other, and yeah. so the first the first few tracks are a little bit more simple and stripped down, and they change as they go. But yeah, he, he put that together himself and he's got it up on Spotify and Apple and um, people can go listen to it when they're not listening to the show. Yeah, That's because it, it totally sets it up as what it is, especially when you're, you're the first opening scene and then you go into that music. I just picture this, that I'm sitting at a movie theater or I'm getting ready to go into a great binge watch mm-hmm. and here comes that music that says, all right, buddy, buckle down. You're going to get into the story. Yeah, you know, I, I think for a long time, people have sort of looked at audio fiction in the podcast space as... And it is the 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 descendant of the radio plays that maybe our grandparents or great grandparents listened to. You know, like the shadow, um, the 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 radio dramas. They're very stripped down. They're very simple. And I, I really think that this is our chance in the modern world of modern technology, like thing you know, spatial audio, that kind of stuff, to really give people a TV show for the ears experience, where you really do feel like when you sit down and hit play, that you're you're getting more than just some characters in a room reading a piece of paper. You're getting a full played out experience. And that's what we deliver here. One of the things that you're doing, you're releasing this one little episode at a time. And what I've got was are the first three so far. So even with Sarah and the continuation with her sister, where she finally gets, you know, enough airspace there or a signal to where she can talk with her sister. And and still Sarah is all about house mom, house mom, house mom. And then and then the sister doesn't, you know, it's like it, it was very, you know, like it didn't nothing really serious happened. It's, it's like, oh, come on. What's going on here? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've got there's a little misdirection that you have to play with things like this. Yeah. And, you know, you have to you have to get Sarah upset in the first scene of the first episode so that, you know, she's surprised by the deer if it was yes. a deer crossing the road yeah. and things like that. It's yeah, it's fun. Well, I thought she was going to crash the first time. I really did. And then, you know, and then but yeah. I mean, and her emotions. I mean, boy, you've got yourself a great voice actor there, dude. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I really do think that a lot of these productions hinge on. You know, being able to connect with the main characters and and um, follow them on their journey, and and she does a fantastic job. And and I think we're early days in this. There's 12 episodes. Rachel obviously comes in early as her character Sarah yeah. here, but um, um, we we meet Arturo Castro as Gordon Morales, and and then um, tomorrow's episode, Wednesday the 14th, is Valentine's Day. So we're gonna get a little. Uh, we're gonna move in that direction, but um, they begin to play off each other like a perfect comedy duo. It's just it. Th- there's that mix of suspense and fear. Oh my God! I felt that when she was at the bus depot because she was just on that dang phone, and the guy in the background is saying "last call to get on the bus." I, I mean, I, I had this fear inside of me that what happens if she misses this bus? They wanted her out of that town right now. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? We we, we know from the start she's chasing a story. She's she needs a story. She needs a story for her career. 
but she's also a curious person. She just can't let go of something. And I think there's a lot of listeners who are probably like that, where they, they latch onto something and they can't let go. And I think standing in that bus station is a moment where we, we realize that she's a little tenacious and she's not going to let things slide. She's the main blame, basically. She's in town. A crime has happened. This town has not had a crime like this in such a long time. She's new. It's got to be her. So she's pulled in. I mean, you, you really can't blame the sheriff. Um, it, it does seem very suspicious that it's happening right, right as she rolls into town. But um, yeah, I, I think that we're going to see... We're going to see that play out. Yeah, yeah. What What was the reason behind West Danville? What What brought you to that you know, that that particular town? You know, I'm going to blame that on Carlos as he wrote this. Really? I think he would just went looking for a small town, um, something you know, New Hampshire, Maine borders somewhere in that area. Like, let's just get us out into the woods. It plays well with the whole you know lost cell signal. Um, you know, lots and lots of wooded land to hide things in, and it's old. You know, it's old. Um, so, yeah, there wasn't really like a, a, a beacon that drew us there. I think it just it, it worked. Yeah. Yeah. The, I, I'm so excited to find out what's going to be happening with Sheriff Allen, um, because, I mean, the one of the things that uh, I'm drawn to a character like that because of the strength. And there's also I believe that sheriffs have visions. They, they, they know more than what they're going to share because they got to hold back. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, and that's I think for her, I think it's professional and personal. too. Yeah. yeah. There are reasons why, you know somebody who is not from the U S is working as a sheriff in the U S and, and, and she also, you know, she's got her, her professional, there are, sorry, her personal uh, quirks that are coming into this as well. So we're, we're going to see her character evolve a lot. As, as a listener, is it wrong for me to think that right away, I mean, even in the opening scenes of, of the story, I'm going, Oh, someone's jealous here. Ooh, you're going to stay in my house. I'm yeah, there's a little bit of jealousy. And then I even felt jealousy with, with the sheriff. Yeah. I mean, You've got somebody else poking around trying to find answers in a very small town with one sheriff. And, and uh, it, you know, it, it does kind of feel like somebody's stepping on another person's territory. Yeah. I love the way that she described, you know, that she records everything. And then, and you know, and of course, Sarah does too. And and this and, and the way that when, when the sheriff steps out of the room and she's you know, trying to hurry up and get this marked down, because really it's all about getting what is going on right now. And Sarah played that very well because we've all been there. It's like, hurry up, turn on the microphone, get this on. Da, 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 da. And then you hurry up and, you know, turn the damn thing off. Yeah. Well, I think one of my first scene, uh, favorite scenes in the first episode is is when Rachel, uh, sorry, Sarah, Rachel playing Sarah has settled into her room, yeah. you know, at the Bruder house that night yes. and, and kind of, you know, click clicks on her recorder and I guess not click because it's just a digital app on the phone. But still, she, you know, she hits play and she starts sort of like getting her notes and her the the B material for whatever show she creates from this gets it on tape. And, you know, we get to hear you know, what she's seen and realizing we hear the wind and all that stuff. And I, I, I think it adds a new layer to the show. It's great. So funny that you that you say that it was an, an app because I was envisioning an old tape recorder, you know, that you would pick up at mm-hmm. Kmart with a cassette. And that, that that's what I was envisioning because for some reason, and I think that's what I love about this story, you're not really telling me when this is taking place. And that really allows me to develop my own idea of what year it is or what decade it is. Yeah, for sure. I mean, look, I, you and I are probably of a, a little bit older generation than than only having the right. audio app on the phone, right? So hitting play, I mean, you and I can probably picture those cassette recorders, you know, long, like Kleenex box, but shorter. Um, but yeah, I, I think that there's a, there's a benefit to not nailing this down to a specific month and year. You know, from a production standpoint, it allows you to write the story and then, you know, it might take you months to get the scripts done, months to do casting. You've got to record the stuff, got to produce the stuff. Um, this is probably about an 18 month project here. So if we were to pick a year at the beginning, that year is sort of obsolete at the end. But it also just lets people sort of root it in today without having to think much about it, which is great. Is everybody in the studio at the same time or are they sending the tracks to you guys? What's happening here? Because I mean, I mean, I love the quality, but is everybody there? So, you know, we really we started out rough with the audio fiction world, me and me and I heart with Bridgewater. It was, it was during uh, COVID. So we were basically recording everybody in their own closets um, (laughs) and then syncing up the tape. I mean, we were using, you know, website driven global clocks to get people to clap on a certain second and then we can sync up our tapes and all that stuff. But once COVID opened up and people were able to get back in together and into studios together, we've really leaned into as often as possible let's get as many people as possible in the room. If, if there's four people in a scene, let's try to get those four people in the same studio space. There's just something magical that happens when these actors can bounce off each other visually in the room. 
and it comes out on tape. So um, I would say that across the board, they're all together, but they're they're frequently in this in this uh, show. They're frequently in the same space. Wow. Um, some of them are a little different. You know, uh, Genevieve is in Texas, um, but you know the the beauty of LA is that there's a lot of performers who are there. Um, and iHeart has a lot of studios all over the place to let us gather and, and get these things get these things recorded. So it's been great. <laughs> the name of the podcast is Consumed. I pick it up on iHeart Radio, but I'm sure it's everywhere, sir. Is that right? It is. Yeah, it is. Wow. Are you going to turn any of your other books into, into a podcast? Because, I mean, dude, I remember talking to you with Lore, and it's like, oh, my God, this guy has grown so much with, with this platform. Yeah, I mean, it lore started out as an accident. It was it was going to be a marketing tool for my fiction. And I do kind of feel like things have gone full circle where now because <laughs> of the popularity of lore and also just the 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 stories I picked up and the things that I've learned, uh that's really allowed me to kind of turn back around, grab that fiction and play with it. Consumed is the first time that we're sort of taking a story I've written before and retooling it and reworking it from the ground up. Um and Carlos again did it such a fantastic job with that. Um, whether or not there's another book on the horizon for some sort of work like that, I don't know. I, there's another show we have in production that will be, again, in the Bridgewater universe, along with Consumed, um, that will be a standalone show maybe late, late this year or early next year. Um, but that one's not based on anything that I've written before. It's it's me and a writer like really hashing out a cool new idea. And uh, it's going to – folks will love that one too. I, I, I really do feel like it. I can't wait to talk to you about that one. Please come back to this show anytime in the future. <laughs> I certainly will. Thanks, Arrow. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? I will. You as well.